Welcome back students. This afternoon I'm going to read a Dr. Seuss story to you, but I thought we'd start off by sharing our Dr. Seuss song with your parents. So, like a lot, as with many of the songs that we learned, this is using the tune B-I-N-G-O. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was its name-o, but we sing it to Dr. Seuss. So let's sing it together with the poster and then we'll show your parents the actions. Here we go. Dr. Seuss is on the loose and this is how we know. Cats, hats, eggs and ham. Cats, hats, eggs and ham. Cats, hats, eggs and ham. We love his fun book so. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the poster over here. And I'm gonna to try to sing and do the actions and you guys can join in with me, okay? Here we go. Oh, we forgot to talk about the actions. So we go cats, hats, because he wears like a hat like this, eggs and ham, like we're eating something. And we do those actions and then we march for most of the rest of the song. And then of course we're silent, we're just like in B-I-N-G-O where we would clap. So you'll see how it goes, here we go. Dr. Seuss is on the loose and this is how we know. Cats, hats, eggs and ham. Cats, hats, eggs and ham. Cats, hats, eggs and ham. We love his fun book so. Dr. Seuss is on the loose and this is how we know. Hats, eggs, and ham. Hats, eggs, and ham. Hats, eggs, and ham. We love this fun book so. Dr. Seuss is on the loose and this is how we know. Eggs, and ham. Eggs, and ham. Eggs, and ham. We love this fun book so. Dr. Seuss is on the loose and this is how we know. And ham. And ham. And him, we love his fun book so. Dr. Seuss is on the loose and this is how we know. Ham, 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 we love his fun book so. Dr. Seuss is on the loose and this is how we know. We love his fun book so. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, it's kind of funny singing it all by myself. I hope you join in and sing at home. We'll read the story in a minute. Hi students, welcome back for our Dr. Seuss story. I hope you remember how I explained to you that I was so lucky as a little kid because Dr. Seuss was writing stories before and when I was a kid too. So when I was little, I also learned how to read with Dr. Seuss. I hope you also remember that I showed you some special books of mine from when I was little. These are books that I had when I was three and four and five years old that my mom bought for me to learn to enjoy Dr. Seuss. I hope you also remember that I explained to you that Dr. Seuss did write plenty of stories with very limited numbers of words to help children learn how to read like Green Eggs and Ham or Cat in the Hat. They're, they have not that many words and they're easier to help kids learn how to read. But he also wrote some kind of trickier stories that had interesting ideas in them. And we read the Starbelly Sneetches. Um, we read uh, What Was I Afraid Of about the green pants with nobody inside them. And a lot of these stories also have a lesson. So let's go ahead and enjoy um, a story from this book. This book, if I look on the cover, it looks like a turtle. It's called Yertle the Turtle and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss. And if I look at the end papers, I can see turtles swimming in the pond. And there's a teeny tiny writing. That's where my mom wrote my name in my book when I was only three years old. That's funny. This book <laughs> only cost 15 cents at a yard sale, I think. Probably my mom bought it. Yertle the Turtle and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss. Pages. Here we go. Okay, I can see the turtles look pretty happy just swimming around in the pond and there's someone sitting on a, a, a rock or something in the pond. On the faraway island of Salamasan, Yertle the turtle was king of the pond. A nice little pond. It was clean. It was neat. The water was warm. There was plenty to eat. The turtles had everything turtles might need and they were all happy. Quite happy in deed. Some of you should be helping me with the rhyming. They were until Yertle, 
the king of them all, decided the kingdom he ruled was too small. I'm ruler, said Yertle, of all that I see, but I don't see enough. That's the trouble with me. With this stone for a throne, I look down on my pond, but I cannot, I cannot look down on the places beyond. This throne that I sit on is too, too low down. It ought to be higher, he said with a frown. If I could sit high, how much greater I'd be. What a king! I'd be ruler of all I could see. Here is unhappy. <clears throat> so Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand, and Yertle the Turtle King gave a command. He ordered nine turtles to swim to his stone, and using these turtles, he built a new throne. Remember, a throne is a place where kings and queens sit. He made each turtle stand on another's one's back, and he piled them all up in a nine turtle stack. And then Yertle climbed up. He sat down on the pile. What a wonderful view. He could see most a mile. There he is, he got higher up. All mine, Yertle cried. Oh, the things I now rule. I'm king of a cow, and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house, and what's more beyond that, I'm king of a blueberry bush and a cat. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. Hope you're getting some of the rhymes. Wow, I've got to stop and think for a sec. So his idea is that anything he can see, he's the ruler or the boss over it, the king of it. That's an interesting idea. And all through that morning, he sat there up high, saying over and over, a great king am I. Until long about noon, then he heard a faint sigh. What's that? Snapped the king, and he looked down the stack. And he saw at the bottom a turtle named Mac, just a part of his throne, and this plain little turtle looked up and he said, Beg your pardon, King Yertle. I've pains in my neck and my shoulders and knees. How long must we stand here, your majesty? Please. Ooh, someone's complaining at the bottom. Where's Mac? <gasps> oh, he looks so mad. Silence! The king of the turtles barked back. I'm king, and you're only a turtle named Mac. You stay in your place while I sit here and rule. I'm king of a cow, and I'm king of a mule. I'm king of a house, and a bush, and a cat. But that isn't all. I'll do better than that. My throne shall be higher, his royal voice thundered. So pile up more turtles. I want about 200. So that was... My throne shall be higher, his royal voice thundered. So pile up more turtles. I want about 200. Doesn't exactly rhyme, but pretty close. Turtles, more turtles, he bellowed and brayed. And the turtles way down in the pond were afraid. They trembled, they shook, but they came, they obeyed. From all over the pond, they came swimming by dozens. Whole families of turtles with uncles and cousins. And all of them stepped on the head of poor Mac. One after another, they climbed up the stack. Then Yertle the turtle was perched up so high, he could see 40 miles from his throne in the sky. Hooray, shouted Yertle, I'm king of the trees. I'm king of the birds, and I'm king of the bees. I'm king of the butterflies, king of the air. Ah, me, what a throne, what a wonderful chair. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh, marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. Wow, it seems to me like he is feeling very proud. I'm kind of making a connection to the, the gingerbread man and. Remember those gingerbread stories back at the holidays? 
and now he was getting prouder and prouder and Yertle's getting prouder and prouder too. Hmm. Then again, from below in the great heavy stack came a groan from that plain little turtle named Matt. Your majesty, please, I don't like to complain, but down here below, we are feeling great pain. I know up on top you are seeing great sights, but down at the bottom, we too should have rights. We turtles can't stand it. Our shells will all crack. Besides, we need food. We are starving, groaned Mac. Wow. So King Yertle's not taking care of his subjects. He's not taking taking care of his turtles. He's, he's just worrying about what he can rule over. Oh, and there he is, really mad again. You hush up your mouth, howled the mighty King Yertle. You've no right to talk to the world's highest turtle. I rule from the clouds, over land, over sea. There's nothing, no, nothing that's higher than me. But while he was shouting, he saw with surprise that the moon of the evening was starting to rise up over his head in the darkening skies. What's that? snorted Yertle. Say, what is that thing that dares to be higher than Yertle the king? I shall not allow it. I'll go higher still. I'll build my throne higher. I can and I will. I'll call some more turtles. I'll stack them to heaven. I need about 5,607. Can he get up to the moon? What do you think? You know, right here, I'm going to stop and think about what might happen. Hmm. You know, it, it's good to, to think and wonder to predict what might happen. He's trying to stack the turtles higher and higher, make his throne higher and higher. Now he wants to get to the moon. Is that possible? What do you think? What do you think's going to happen? And he's getting prouder and prouder, too. That's not so good either, huh? But as Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand and started to order and give the command, that plain little turtle below in the stack, that plain little turtle whose name was just Mac, decided he'd taken enough, and he had. And that plain little lad got a little bit mad. And that plain little Mac did a plain little thing. He burped. And his burp bleh, shook the throne of the king. There he is. They used a little speech bubble to show his burping. Ooh, and all the turtles are jostled. <gasps> and Yertle the turtle, the king of the trees, the king of the air and the birds and the bees, the king of a house and a cow and a mule. Well, that was the end of the turtle king's rule. For Yertle the king of all Salamasand fell ha off his high throne and fell plunk in the pond. And today the great Yertle, that marvelous he, is king of the mud, that is all he can see. And the turtles, of course, all the turtles are free as turtles, and maybe all creatures, should be. Okay, that's the end of that story. There are more stories in that book, but that's the end of the story, Yertle the Turtle. Okay, we just finished reading the story, Yertle the Turtle. So let's ask ourselves the three questions that we don't have to ask every time we finish a book. Of course, we have to do something every time we finish a book, but especially with some of these fun uh, Dr. Seuss stories, stories that have animals. They're kind of like fables, really. And it's good to ask ourselves these questions. Number one, what happened? Because that's also known as the plot. So what happened in the story? Let's see. Yertle the turtle was the kind of the leader, maybe. He thought he was the leader of the pond, and then he wanted to be a king more and more. He kind of got more greedy about everything that he wanted to be the king over, so he got stacked higher and higher and higher, until the end, it was too much and it didn't work and he just fell 
plop in the pond. And, and then he was just king of the mud. Number two, what did we learn? So this is like the lesson or moral of the story. Hmm, I'm wondering if you've already been thinking about what the lesson or the moral of this story could be. Did you already maybe talk to your parents about it, say something to them? I'm thinking it could be maybe about how Yertle got too greedy, right? It's one thing to maybe be a leader, but when you're a leader, you're supposed to be taking care of the people you're the leader over. Like if you're the president, you're supposed to take care of the people. Or if you're a king, you're supposed to take care of your subjects. And uh, in this case, he just wanted more and more and more. So he was greedy and he wasn't doing his job. So maybe the lesson or moral is about not being too greedy and also maybe being sure that you're doing your job or else you're going to have a big problem at the end. And then number three, author's purpose. Um, in this case, hmm, I wonder if Dr. Seuss was trying to help us enjoy a story, write a funny story for us to have fun and, and get a laugh, right? Because that can be, you know, having a laugh, having a fun time reading a story, something silly, that can be the purpose of an author to have us enjoy ourselves. But I think also maybe he might have been trying to teach us a lesson about behavior, about not being too greedy, maybe about being a good leader and um, taking care of our subjects if we're in charge of something or someone. Anyway, so that's it for today. Um, I love you guys. I miss you. Please be sure to wash your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, uh, get some time mm, maybe outside. I know it's rainy today. Um, help your family around the house. Do at least a little writing and a lot of reading. Okay. Elbow bump.